Hey, this is Andy Mandel with the Mandel team at Remax, and we're here to bring you our newest series that we're titling This Week in Real Estate. With changes going on so quickly in the industry, it's really important to me that we keep all of our clients and people in our database informed of what's going on on a weekly basis. Things are changing daily, but at the very least, once a week, you're gonna be getting an email from me about what's going on in the real estate industry, things that are going to affect you, whether or not you're looking to buy or sell real estate. So for real estate, Broward County has deemed real estate sales and title services, so closings, as an essential service as long as we follow CDC guidelines. So title companies and law offices are still allowed to operate and they are still doing closings. They're doing a lot more virtual and e-signing closings these days. Um, we have the ability to do that, so you don't have to see anyone in person if you wanna close. For real estate sales, we are allowed to still operate and sell and show property as long as we are not face-to-face -face with clients. So I can do virtual Zoom uh, meetings and I've been doing a lot of those with buyers and sellers. Uh, I can record properties and send them to my buyers, but I cannot meet with anyone face-to-face. -face. Uh, so that's how we're operating right now. I'm, I've made separate videos showing what we're doing specifically for buyers and what we're doing for sellers to help them buy and sell property these days. Feel free to watch those if you're interested on how we're still operating in this new world that we're in. So as far as the state of Florida goes for showings, we have a system called Showing Time that tracks how many properties are being shown. Showings are down 60% over the entire state. Unfortunately, we can't break that down county by county, city by city. But on the whole, as a state, showings are down 60%, which I view as a good thing. It means people are taking this seriously. They're not out just completely disregarding all the social distancing rules and all that kind of stuff. People are taking this seriously. They're not down 100%, so properties are still being shown and they are still selling. So what about traffic on all these online websites like Zillow and Realtor.com? Well, Zillow's traffic, they just came out the other day and they said that traffic is down 25% on their website. And while that might seem like a lot, they still have about 140 million people coming to their website every single month. So there are still a lot of buyers who are out there looking. Yes, a lot of people have left the market completely. They're not interested in looking right now, and that's fine. They most likely weren't going to buy anyway. People who are serious are still on the website. Realtor.com, their traffic is down 10% and the most heavily visited pages on Realtor.com are updates on news as far as real estate goes. So people are on the website, they're monitoring what's going on, and they are still showing an interest in buying and selling real estate. So let's talk about the people who are still looking. The number of sessions per user, so that means how many times an individual user goes to these websites like Zillow and Realtor.com, that's actually up 4%. So the people who are looking are very, very active right now, which makes sense because there's not a lot else going on. They can't leave their house. They're not going to work for a lot of these people. So you know, they're, they're very active on these websites, looking at more and more homes. So buyers are still out there. And the time that they're spending on the website is also up about 4%. So people are going on the website more and more often and they're spending more time on the website looking at these properties. So if you can market properties correctly, now is a great time to get your home in front of all these buyers when they have nothing else distracting them in their lives. They're on these websites looking for their next home. A lot of them may be waiting for this to clear up, but they're looking right now and they're favoriting properties and they're getting ready to see these when the smoke clears or they're talking to their agents about how they can schedule virtual showings of these properties. Now I've made separate videos about how we're helping sellers sell properties right now and how we're helping buyers sell properties or see properties with virtual showings. So if you're interested in those videos, feel free to check them out. I'm not gonna repeat it here, but I do wanna get into what's next as far as what's happening in real estate this week, which is mortgages. I'm not gonna bore you with interest rates. I know that's a very boring conversation for a lot of people, but let's talk about the types of mortgages that are currently available and what's going on, because there have been a lot of changes this week with mortgages. FHA and VA have changed their criteria, so they are now, at least with our lender, who's the biggest FHA lender in America, they are now not accepting FHA loans with credit scores under 660. Uh, same thing for VA, you gotta have a 660 credit score or above, which honestly I think is a good thing. We really don't wanna be having people with low credit scores who have 
a bad history of paying their bills, buying houses in a time like this, it's just a bad idea for everyone. FHA and VA loans only make up about 11% of the marketplace right now, so nothing to be too concerned about. But if you were planning on buying and getting an FHA or VA loan, for the time being, you have to have a minimum of 660 credit score. So jumbo mortgages. Right now, jumbo mortgages are completely out the window. Nobody is doing jumbo mortgages. A jumbo mortgage is if you are getting a mortgage for the value of about 511 or higher. So, you know, if you're buying a million dollar house, it means you're financing at least 511,000, which is a lot of people who are buying these six, seven hundred thousand dollar houses, they're getting jumbo financing. That is completely out the window. What's going on is the people who are buying these mortgages after they're written, they're saying, we no longer want to buy these products. So if the mortgage companies can't sell the mortgages to these end investors because they're not buying them, they can't write the mortgages. So jumbo mortgages are out. So are these what's called non-QM loans. So that's like a bank statement loan, any of these kind of subprime type products that used to be out there, those are completely gone. Nobody is closing on those. Um, that's a very, very, very small part of our market. As far as verifying employment, lenders used to be able to verify the final employment before closing, about you know two to three days prior to closing, they would just reach back out to the employer and say, hey, I just wanna make sure John Smith is still employed at your company. He's still making the same salary because he's buying a house tomorrow. Now they're doing that the day of closing. So what I see is this might potentially delay closings a little bit. You know, there might be some last minute hiccups if the employer can't get the information to the mortgage company that day when they're requesting it. But they're making sure the day of closing that people who are buying a house are still employed. And that's because things are changing so quickly that they wanna make sure that this person didn't get laid off in the last 24 hours. And e-closings, I believe I mentioned this, but our title company that we work with is now doing a lot of e-closings. So you don't even have to physically be at the closing. If you do still want to come and physically sign your documents, they're asking that us realtors are not present at your closing. They wanna make sure that they have as few people as possible in the room to abide by CDC guidelines. Honestly, when we come to our closings, we're just there to support our clients and to celebrate with them because it's a very exciting time in their lives. But we're not really necessary to be there, so we are choosing the safe route. We are distancing ourselves and not coming to anything that we don't need physically to be at. The government also this week passed a $2 trillion stimulus plan to support people who are now unemployed, may have lost their jobs, or are affected by this uh, virus outbreak. So I'm gonna have some information regarding that package. Feel free to read through that. There's a lot of potential benefits to people if you are maybe unemployed, or if you're a small business owner, there's a ton of money out there for small business loans. We're gonna be putting out a lot more content related to that soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that, but feel free to read the link below uh, regarding what's going on with that stimulus package. That's it for this week in real estate. My name is Andy Mandel. I'm with Remax Advisors. If you have any questions on what's going on or if there's anything that I can do to help you out in these trying times, please do not hesitate to reach out. I wanna make sure I'm doing everything I can to be of service for you. I hope you and your family are well. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next week.